What up guys, Justin here from Aquavita Woodworks and today I'm going to be showing you how I made this motorized challenge coin display. Let's get into it. Before I start this project, I thought I would show you some of the mistakes I made up to this point. I didn't record all the prototypes I made because it just took me a few weeks to figure out how I wanted to do this correctly. But I can show you now that they're done some of the mistakes before this final carve. This is the first prototype I made and it was mostly just a proof of concept to see if I could make this coin spin around on the, the platform. And as you can see, if you turn this by hand, the coin does spin. There's a few issues with this, however. Uh, the first one being that this coin doesn't really stay in these slots very well. They're designed specifically for this coin, so you really have to jam it in there and it falls over pretty easily. You can see I kind of butchered these ones, trying to experiment different ways to hold the coins in, especially different thickness of coins. You will see that I fixed that later on in the video. If I open this up, you can see how this works. Basically, when you turn this cover, it turns these gears around this ring gear and they rotate the coins. After building this, I realized that I wanted to have this powered by a motor, so I ended up adding a drive gear to the center here, which I'll show you in the next design. This is the second prototype I made for this project, and right off the bat you'll notice that it's a full planetary gear system now. You have the sun gear in the middle, which turns the planet gears around the ring gear. The issue I had with this prototype was that the tolerances for these gears was just too tight. You'll see that there's really no wiggle room here, and that's not because of the gears I designed, it's because of the bit I used to carve them out on the machine. I used a quarter inch bit here to carve out these gear teeth, and I should have used an eighth inch bit. I fixed that on the next design, which makes a lot more wiggle room and way less friction for this gear system. You can see that it does spin, but I was afraid that the friction would overpower this motor. And this motor is what brings us to the next issue with this prototype. If I lift up this center sun gear, you can see that I carved a large hole here, and the goal was to be able to drop this motor in like that, but I realized that's not the best way to do this. I should have carved a small hole right in the center of this gear system that would fit the shaft and mount it from underneath. And I also changed something by adding legs underneath to jack it up to fit the motor. So now I'll show you the final design for this. For this third prototype, the first thing that you'll obviously notice is that there's a cover for it now. I didn't bother with the second one because I had made too many mistakes and didn't want to waste the wood. The underside looks the same as the second with these two legs holding the motor off the ground but I was able to mount this motor correctly by carving a small hole in the middle that fits the shaft. If I take the cover off, you'll see that the shaft connects to this center sun gear, which is held in place by a small nail through a hole in the shaft. And now there's also a lot of wiggle room because I used the correct bit to carve the contour cuts for these gears. And if I turn everything on, it moves with a lot less friction than it would have otherwise. And since there is wiggle room in these gears, this cover is used to hold them in place. And now they're not gonna go anywhere. You may also notice that these slots look a little bit different than the first prototype. And this is actually my solution to the different size coin issue, but I'm not gonna explain how that works until later on in the video when I assemble the final product. Uh, so now that my design is finalized, let's actually go build one using nice wood. And just like most of my CNC projects, I started off designing this in SketchUp so I could make sure that all the components fit together as they should, and it also allows me to play around with tolerances a bit. Once I have everything designed, I laid out my components flat and got ready to transfer them into Carbide Create. Carbide Create is the program that I choose to use to program the toolpaths for my CNC machine, but you could use any program that you wanted. For the sake of keeping this video short, I'm not going to go into too much detail on assigning toolpaths for this project. If you're interested in the depths and the process, I do have a detailed guide on how to assign them, as well as the SVG files in the description. Overall, this project is pretty basic. It uses two different CNC bits, a quarter inch bit and a eighth inch bit, to do pocket carves and contour carves on three different pieces of wood. One of the pieces of wood is carved on both sides, so overall it's four carves in total. Once all my G-code is finalized, I start gathering my materials. For this project, I'm using two pieces of maple, a piece of walnut, a three RPM motor, the power cord, some number six panhead screws, and some wire nuts. I'll also be using this rubber U-channel to help me with the different size coins. 
Now that I have all my materials, I can start carving. The first carve here is for the main base, starting with the slots on the bottom for the legs and where the motor goes, and then flipping it over and carving the ring gear for the planetary gear system. I believe this carve, including the top and bottom, took about 40 minutes. Up next, I started carving the top cover. This carve took a long time, about an hour and 10 minutes, because the quarter inch bit had to hog out a whole bunch of material. I probably could have bumped up my feeds and speeds a little bit, but I wasn't sure how the maple and walnut would react to this kind of carve. Finally, I could move on to carving the gears and legs out of my piece of walnut. This is the only carve that uses double-sided tape and not tabs, because tabs within these little gear teeth would be a real pain to sand later on. Using the double-sided tape and carving all the way through the wood allows the gears to be completely free once everything is done. It's just a matter of pulling up the excess material and then removing the gears from the wasteboard without breaking the teeth. Once all the carving is done, this is what you should be left with. We have the legs, the center drive gear, the eight planetary gears, the top cover, and the double-sided carve, which is the bottom base and the top ring gear. After cutting off the tabs from the base and the top cover, I use my router table to round over the edges, and then I start sanding. Sanding this project takes a long time because of all these small gear teeth. I'm not going to show you too much of me sanding because it's boring enough in person. I ended up sanding all of these pieces up to 320 grit sandpaper though, which took me about an hour. Once done sanding, I used wood glue to secure the legs to the bottom base, and then I got ready to apply my finish. As with most of my projects, my go-to finish is spray lacquer, so I start applying a bunch of different coats, let them dry, and keep repeating that until I'm satisfied with how smooth the surfaces are. Without going too much into depth on spray lacquer, I will say that I do like to use 800 grit sandpaper and a tack cloth in between coats just to make sure everything is nice and smooth. This might be unnecessary, but whatever, it works for me. Once all the components are dry, we need to drill a hole into this drive gear so that we can put a small nail through the shaft to lock it in place while the motor spins. And despite being just a simple hole, I was pretty nervous about snapping off that little lip on the gear. That would have made me have to recarve it, which would have just been annoying. Luckily, nothing broke, and I could move on to assembling this coin display. Uh, to get this done, I needed to fish the wire through the small hole in the leg in the back, and then use wire nuts to attach my wires so that my motor could be powered. I'm no electrician, so I'm not going to give you advice on how to do this. Uh, when it comes to wire management, I guess you can kind of do whatever you want with this. My way might not be the best way to do it, but it does work in the end. Once everything is connected, all you need to do is screw the motor into the base using the small number six pan head screws. Before I start my final assembly, I apply a generous amount of paste wax to my base and gears. This allows them to be a little bit lubricated and makes it so there's a lot less friction in the gear system. Finally, we can slide our center drive gear onto the shaft and insert a small nail through the hole we made to hold it in place. Once that's done, it's just a matter of putting the gears in the correct places and putting the cover on. And now that everything is finally assembled, I can show you how I fixed my coin slot issue. Basically, I used this rubber U-channel that I got off McMaster Car and I cut small chunks of it that will fit into my coin slots. I then insert this rubber U-channel around the coins and insert them into the slots. This not only holds thin coins because of the friction, but it allows enough room for thicker coins because the rubber can move a little bit. I think this is a pretty good solution. It's not going to hold 100% of challenge coins, but it does hold a large variety of them. Once you have all those cut, you're all done. Not a bad project. All right, guys, that's all I got for today. This was a fun project. Uh, sorry I only have identical coins for this. It does fit a bunch of different sizes, uh, but I only had these on hand. Uh, if you liked this project or have any ideas for me, leave me a comment. And as always, hit the subscribe button. See you next time.